Hey, I'm back. I'm back. Let me give you a minute to get back on. Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. See if they're still paying attention. Get me some honey while I'm at it. I'm back. Hey, sorry about that. Just for that, I'm giving them an extra 10 minutes. Technology time chance. I don't know what causes that, but it's the third time in about 35 live broadcasts, so I can't complain too much, can I? So I'm just thankful you're back with us. We'll go about another 10 minutes. I want to finish this thought uh, more than even being stubborn and going extra 10 minutes just because it died. I want to finish this thought. So let's pick up where we're at. We're now down to... The part of the lesson, good to have you with us, Edwin. We're glad you're with us. We're down to now the part of the lesson where we're talking about the different categories of tongues in the Bible, okay? In the New Testament, Acts 2 going forward. And we're finishing up our description of the first category. When somebody throughout the book of Acts received the Holy Ghost, was filled with God's Spirit in fulfillment of Joel 2.28. The last day said, God, I'll pour out my Spirit upon all flesh. Thereafter, they have the initial sign of speaking in tongues. We understand fruits are very important. Godliness and righteous living is important. It follows that. But that's the first category. And I just finished the thought, okay? And I gave, I was giving you, when it died, I was giving you three examples. I just said that in the Jewish mind, when something's established a third time, it is a law. It's fixed to, to infinity, literally to eternity in the Jewish mind. Where the Jewish God used Jewish people to write most of the New Testament. We understand God inspired them. It's all given by God. With the exception of Luke, possibly all of them were Jewish. And, and as he writes this, um, we, see, we see in the book of Acts, clearly, Acts 2, Acts... <laughs> Somebody want a dog? Come pick him up. I'll give him to you right now for free, baby. Acts 2, 2 chapter 1 to 4. You see where the Jews were born into the church. And it records clearly there when they were born into the church, they were filled with the Spirit with the evidence of speaking in other tongues. That's a clear example. You see in Acts 10, 44 to 46, when the Gentiles are born into the church, thereafter they spoke with tongues. That's a clear example. So you have, notice a Jew, and now you have Gentiles. And then you see in Acts 19, 2 through 6, um, where the other people from other religions, yea, the 12 men that followed John the Baptist, were born into the church, and they received the Holy Ghost speaking in tongues, Acts 19, 2 through 6. That's three clear examples. You also see others. I've talked about them. Acts 8 is the Samaritans. Clearly, there was an outward expression there of the Spirit. I believe it was certainly tongues. So that's, that's multiple examples of that first category of tongue speaking in the Bible. Now, let me just whet your appetite for next Thursday's lesson. The second and third categories of tongue speaking in the Bible, they're different. The first time somebody receives the Spirit, the tongues are not to be interpreted. It's not intended for that. It's not even really a prayer language. Though if they linger there long enough, they can move from the initial infilling into a dimension of prayer in the Spirit. I agree with that. But the initial accompaniment of tongues as the Spirit fills somebody is there as a sign to be consistent with the experience that the apostles had in the beginning. Acts 2, we talked about that a moment ago. Acts 15, the Gentiles were measured back in the eyes of the elders in Jerusalem back to the experience of Acts 2. Acts 11, the Gentiles were measured in the eyes of the elders in Jerusalem back to the experience of Acts 2. So you have to be able to measure it back to that experience. The experience of Acts 2 was when they received the Spirit, they spoke in tongues, and that was God's sign. He poured out His Spirit, and the last day church of Gentile revival begins. So we talked about that. The second category of tongue speaking in the Bible, and you should write this down, make notes, go back and listen. The second category of tongue speaking in the Bible is your prayer language. 
of tones. And I'll get deeper into this next week. I'll give you several scriptures, but um, I'll just briefly just hit on for just a moment here. First Corinthians 14. Let me just briefly hit on your prayer language of tongues. Just whet your appetite here uh, for next for next week. The second category or manifestation of tongue speaking in the Bible, as I would call it, describe it, is the prayer language of Holy Ghost filled believers. Yea, Christians in God's church. It's in covenant with God, filled with the Spirit. So this is the second category. I've already said this multiple times. I see we have some other people coming on watching. Um, there's many Bible verses in each of these categories. The initial infilling of a new believer that's never been filled with the Spirit with speaking tongues. There's many Bible verses. I have gave many of them tonight. The second category of tongue speaking I see in the Bible is the prayer language of believers that have been filled with the Spirit previously. And thereafter, they, they move into a dimension of prayer. And part of that, not all of it, but part of that is the Spirit pray through them. The Spirit prays through them with intercession and groanings, yea, tongue speaking. Okay, and the third category is the one that confuses many denominal people that just frankly have been taught wrong, incorrectly. 1 Corinthians 14, uh, the gift of tongues and interpretation as it operates as part of the nine gifts of the Spirit, which in that category, the third category, the gift of tongues, it is always to be interpreted. But that's the only manifestation or category or expression of tongue speaking that is meant to be interpreted. The other two are not interpreted. The second one I'm talking about now, I took it just as a simple reference point to 1 Corinthians 14, verse 15. 1 Corinthians 14, verse 15. What is it then? Can you give me an amen if you have it? Let me know you're still with me here. We had a little technical glitch a moment ago. I'm winding down. I got three or four minutes left and we'll just put a bow on this and come back next week. But notice what it says, 1 Corinthians 14 and 15. What is it then? I will pray with the Spirit. I will pray with an understanding. I also will sing with the Spirit and I will sing with the understanding. So when you think about the second category of tongue speaking in scriptures, it is the prayer language of a believer. And ultimately, as a new believer begins to develop a well-rounded prayer life, there's many elements of that that they should have present in their prayer life. Okay, of course, the Our Father's Prayer is a great example. He gives us that manner of prayer. We always start out with praise. You have to repent daily. You should have a time of Bible reading, a time of singing, a time of petition, a time of meditation, a time of cleansing, a time of just listening, all of that. Okay, it's a link to study for some other time. But in your well-rounded prayer life, you should also have a time in which you pray with an understanding. What is that? That's your natural language. You should have a prayer journal. You should have a mental log or on your tablet or your phone or something written in your Bible, a list of things that you're praying for, for your personal development, yea, for your family, other people you're praying for. But then also beyond that, there will be times that you need to release and pray in the spirit, yea, pray in tongues. Just like you yielded yourself to it the first time, when you received it the first time, as a believer, there's times in which you need to open up daily, I would say, daily to a healthy, growing believer, daily, that you should have a time of prayer where you open up and you pray in the Spirit. What does that do? It does many things. I'll give you several verses next week, but it renews your mind and your spirit. It refreshes you. It restores unto you the joy of your salvation. Good to have you watching with us, Sister Wendy, Sister Susan. Good to have you folks watching with us, Sister Sims. But as you as you pray in the Holy Ghost, you're renewed in the spirit, it refreshes your joy. We'll get deeper into this next week, talking about the second category of tongue speaking in the Bible. There's three, okay? And then also, as you pray in the spirit, okay, the scripture teaches it. It's in Romans chapter 8, 26, 27. Um, it teaches we don't really know what we should pray for as we ought. Sometimes we do. We know our petitions. You have not because you ask not. But then let's say you wake up at 2 a.m. in the morning. And your mind goes to your loved one, Jim. And you don't know what's going on in Jim's life. Or your mind goes to that missionary that preached at your church four months ago. Or your mind goes to fill in the blank. And, and they're just upon your mind. You maybe have an image or you just have a name that, boom, flashes before your mind. And you're wide awake. You feel the presence of God. You feel a tugging and a 
a burden, uh, a weightiness of concern upon your heart, upon your spirit, your emotions for that person. But you know nothing about what they're going through. You can't call them and text them. Hey, what's going on? I've been thinking about you. 2 a.m. in the morning. But what do you do? What I would do is I would begin to go to prayer. God, I worship you. I thank you for waking me up. God, I don't know what's going on in Jim's life, but I just want to pray over him right now. I would pray a few things on that line, but then you know what I would do? I would release the Holy Ghost. I would begin to pray in the Spirit. The Spirit of the prophets is subject to the prophets. You walk in the Spirit. You walk with God. You can just step into that. You can just release it. It's not faking it or manufacturing it. You just step into that. It just begins to flow. Okay, a river is always flowing. That's what the Spirit's supposed to do. So you just step into that and begin to release the Holy Ghost, the Spirit. And and how long should you pray there in the Spirit for things that you don't know about until the burden lifts, until the weight lifts, until maybe your pastor, God flashes your pastor's face or his wife before you. You don't know what they're facing. You don't know what demon they're dealing with at 2 a.m. in the morning, but God knows, and that's why he's woke you up. So you need to pray in the Spirit for Whoever God lays upon your heart, until when? Let the peace of God govern or rule in your heart until you feel peace over that matter. God will let you know when that prayer is fulfilled. The Spirit prays through you with groanings, yea, intercessions, groanings, utterances, things of this nature, that, that, that as we don't really know what we should pray for, the Spirit prays according to the will of God. With groanings and at other places, it says with utterances and we're praying in the spirit. So that's what you're called to do. And it brings about a great refreshing for you. It refreshes your joy. So we'll we'll pick up right there next Thursday night. Finishing up and getting into detail, talking about the second category of the manifestation of tongues or tongue speaking in the Bible. The prayer language of tongues for the believer. Somebody asked me once, well, when other people come to the church and they pray in tongues and maybe you go lay hands on somebody and you pray for them in tongues, why is that not interpreted? It's not intended to be interpreted. It's a prayer language, meaning I have gone praying for that person in the altar as far as I can go based upon my clear knowledge, based upon what I am observing and what I know through discernment or otherwise. I don't know anything else. I have no other words to pray over them, but I don't feel released from them. So you know what I'm going to do? I pray with an understanding. I'm going to do what the Bible says. I'm going to pray in the Spirit now. I'm going to release the Holy Ghost. I'm going to stay right here with them. Or I'm going to be in this area, this vicinity, praying with them in the Spirit until that lifts from me. God knows a lot better than I do. He's omnipresent, mighty God. I'm simple, sinful, frail flesh. So I'm going to pray in the Spirit. And when it releases, when I feel peace, when that burden lifts off of me, then I'm going to stop praying for them and go on and do something else. So we'll finish talking about that one next week, and then we'll also get into detail next week about the nine gifts of the Spirit. Can you do some homework for me? I want you to type this on here if you'll do a little homework. Can you just type 1 Corinthians C-O-R, 1 Corinthians 12, colon 8, dash 10. 1 Corinthians 12, colon 8 to 10. And go back and read that for me, just a couple little verses. 1 Corinthians 12, 8 to 10. That is the listing of the nine gifts of the Spirit, as Paul writes to the church. Among them is, can I get somebody to type it on there for me? Among them is um, tongues and interpretation. And that's two of the gifts of the Spirit. And we're going to talk heavily about that. Because the language that Paul uses as he's trying to release revelation and understanding to the church, as he's trying to bring understanding and set things in order in 1 Corinthians 14, the language that he uses, many preachers incorrectly, frankly, in blatant error, use that same language and apply it to every category or manifestation of tongues in the Bible. Thank you, Sister Wendy. Thank you, Sister Tammy. But they try to apply it to every manifestation of tongues in the Bible, and it's wrong. 1 Corinthians 14 is written specifically and narrowly in the scope now concerning spiritual gifts. It's written in the scope of the nine spiritual gifts of that text, 1 Corinthians 12 to chapter 14. Okay, and people misapply those statements to the other, other categories of tongue speaking, principally, mainly, when somebody's filled with the Holy Ghost the first time speaking in tongues. So uh, we'll get deeper into that next week. Again, as we finish here, uh, thank you for your prayers. Continue praying for us. We have 
um, received our book back, 310 pages from the printer. Um, publisher, we've cleaned up a couple things on the cover. They're going to clean up a few things here, put our barcode on it. But this book on end time prophecy, the unveiling, um, it's available now. You can email me, pastordagan at gmail.com. Have a pre-order waiting list. They'll start going out next week. And we're submitting it back to the Pentecostal Publishing House uh, next week. It'll take them about six to eight weeks to review it. And we hope to have it available through them, hard copy and ebook later this year. But you can order one from me now. $30 a book. I'm not here selling books. It is what it is. Buy it. Don't buy it. It's up to you. With that being said, tomorrow, 1 p.m., I will continue under the umbrella of Prophecy Live. That's what I do on Friday. It deals with all, all elements of end-time prophecy, not in a comprehensive sense, but more in a uh, skimming the surface type of way. And we will deal with that tomorrow. Tomorrow, we're going to deal with um, the lesson, the four common figures of the tribulation, Satan, the spirit of Antichrist, the Antichrist, the person, and then the false prophet, yea, the second beast that works with Antichrist. We'll deal with that tomorrow at 1 p.m. Love you. I want to pray for you right now. A church website, hopeapostolicqpc.org. Invite you to church. will be open Sunday. Doors open Mother's Day, 11 a.m. My wife, the wonderful woman, is going to be preaching, ministering on Mother's Day. And we're looking forward to blessing mothers, prophesying, praying over them, speaking a word over them as God gives it to us. And hopeful for them to be there. And if I could be of any service, please email us, pastordagan at gmail.com. Let us pray. Lord God, I'm humbled to be able to serve, to be able to teach. Help us to do it with the right spirit, the right way. Help all your people, God, to go deep in the things of God. Help us to reach out to the saints of God that were honored to pastor. Encourage them. Let this be a great resource for them. Help us to reach deep into this community through this teaching. Help us to reach the backsliders and to the unsaved around the world. And God, if there be any apostolic saints that watch, we welcome them. But help them to gravitate and to glean to their pastor. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen, amen, amen. God bless you. We love you. We'll be teaching tomorrow, 1 p.m. on Prophecy Live, dealing with the Antichrist and otherwise. Next Thursday, the second part of this lesson, dealing with the three categories of tongue speaking in the Bible. We'll be finishing up the discussion of the prayer language of tongues, getting into the gifts of the Spirit, tongues and interpretation. I love you. Tim Hatton, it's great to see you, buddy. Sister Linda, great to see you. Sister Tony, God bless you. Love you guys. Have a great night. Praying for you. You're in my heart. I covered your prayers. Love you. Have a great night.